Hi everyone, welcome back to Dental Zen. Today we are here with a new video, Hunter Shrigar Bands. We are here by continuing our lectures on the topic enamel, which is the outermost layer of the tooth. And yes, it is made up of enamel rods, which is the basic structural unit of enamel. These enamel rods are not present in a straight course. No, no, no. But they are present inside the enamel like a wavy course. That means they keep on changing their direction. They turn to left, then right, then again left, again right. Now, because of this change in direction of enamel rods, they is an appearance of the enamel which is known as hunter shriga bands as the words say bands they appear as bands but do you think they are of same color no there is dark band then light band then dark band then light band so what is this arrangement this is called alternating alternating means one after the another so alternating dark and light bands of the enamel are known as hunter shriga bands so in this video we are going to know understand that how this change in direction of enamel rods is leading to an appearance hunter shriga band when the enamel is observed under the microscope so they are also known as bands of hunter and trigger so this can come as a short note for you or it can come as a part of the long question that is structure of enamel where you have to write about all these microscopic structures which we are going to cover one by one we have already discussed first four in the previous videos go check them in today's video we are going to cover the fifth one that is hunter trigger bands so but it's just looking at the name it seems it would be very very difficult to understand Stand. but no it's very easy you just need to know what are these bands when are they seen where are they seen in a novel and why are they seen so we divide this video into two parts first we'll just understand that is the concept of hunter trigger band and in the second part i'll tell you how to write your answer if you get the hunter trigger bands as short note or as a part of your long question so let's begin before we start don't forget to subscribe to dentals and if you have not done that till now also hit on the bell icon so that you may notified about new videos coming to first part understanding under trigger bands enamel rods present inside the enamel they run like this from dentine enamel junction to the tooth surface so this is called wavy or tortuous course let's magnify this zone and see what is happening here so enamel rods are changing their direction why are they changing their, their direction to adapt to adapt to what to the function of mastication so when masticatory load comes if these rods will be straight they can easily fracture under this load and they can break down but when they are they have changed their direction like this so they will prevent the breaking fracture of the rods so we know the change in the rod direction is a functional adaptation of the rods to minimize the risk of fracture or cleavage under the pressure of masticatory forces now when this change in direction of enamel rods is observed under the microscope in a longitudinally cut ground section of the tooth that is when we cut the section along the long axis of the tooth place it under microscope and 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 we see it under obliquely reflected light then we see what is known as hunter shrigger bands that is alternating light and dark bands so in the next part we are going to understand that how this change in direction of enamel rods is appearing as dark and light bands let's magnify this area further so we can see that when we cut the enamel in the longitudinal section in this zone what is happening here some of the rods they cut get cut in the longitudinal axis like this so the rods are cut longitudinally and some of the rods in the other group of rods they are cut transversely so we can see their transverse section so the ones which are cut longitudinally they appear as dark bands on the microscope so these are the dark bands and the ones which are cut transversely they appear as light bands and another group of rods which is again dark and then another group of rod which is again light so on the microscope they appear like this that is alternating dark and light bands if we see the angle between these two bands it will be around 40 degree so i hope you understood why it is there because some rods are cut longitudinally and some are cut transversely transversely appear as light longitudinally appear as dark now let's see where are they seen this is a longitudinally cut section let's magnify so do you think they are present in the entire thickness of enamel no if we divide and cut the enamel into three equal parts that is one two three where do you think is the change in the direction of enamel rods it is in the inner two thirds here but in the outer one third the rods will be straight so we do not see hunter trigger bands in the outer one third but only in the inner two third inner two third of the enamel these bands are seen which on a section will appear like this under the microscope so this is dentino enamel junction this is dentine this is enamel surface and these 
hunter sugar bands alternating light and dark bands they are present in the inner two third of the enamel very very important that where are they present now this is seen when we see it under the microscope so we say that it is an optical phenomena that is when seen under the light so now we come to the second part of the video that how you have to write your answer you have to answer four questions what when where why so let's start with the introduction hunter sugar bands are due to more or less regular change in the direction of enamel rods we already know why this change is there as a functional adaptation why functional adaptation to prevent the cleavage that is breakdown to minimize the risk of cleavage in axial direction so that they do not break down under the load of masticatory forces and because of this change in direction of enamel rods we see hunter shaker bands so change in direction of enamel rods is responsible for hunter shaker bands that is alternating dark and light bands so now we come to the first question that is what are these bands they are alternating dark and light bands as you can see here so what is the width or the size of these bands so they are about 50 micrometers they vary in width but they are approximately 50 micrometer in width and when are they seen when we got longitudinal sections that is along the long axis of the tooth and when we observe them under oblique reflected light so that is the second question when now you th do you know we can reverse these bands how if we change the direction of this light we can reverse the bands that means the dark bands will become light and the light becomes bands will become dark so the bands can be reversed by altering the direction of incident illumination now these bands can also be seen in polarized light that can be your entrance question so they can be seen in reflected light and they can be seen in polarized light now we come to the where of the that is the third question that is where are they seen they originate at dentine enamel junction so this is dentine and they just end below the enamel surface at some distance so this is the enamel surface below that only they end and where are they present so what is this area this is the inner two-thirds of the enamel so these bands are present in the inner two-thirds of enamel that is the answer for your question where are they present now how many rods would be there what do you think that is width of this band is 50 micrometer and width of one enamel rods is 5 micrometer so approximately 10 enamel rods will be present in a band so that can be your entrance question 10 to 20 enamel rods one in one hunter sugar band now naming of these bands the prisms or the rods which are cut longitudinally they appear as dark bands as we just discussed and they are known as diazones d for dark d for diazone and the prisms which are cut transversely they appear as light bands and they are known as parazones as we can see here this can be two important fiber questions and the angle between two zones diazones and parazones would be 40 degree as we have already discussed and this can be your entrance question now the crystals enamel crystals are present inside the rods so within the bands we have rods about 10 to 20 rods in one band and within these enamel rods there are enamel crystals so there is change in the direction of these crystals in the two zones that means this is the longitudinally cut rods and these are transversely cut rods so obviously there will be change in the direction of crystals so in this the crystals are arranged like this in this the crystals are arranged like this but within the zones itself the crystals further tilt 50 degree to the central axis for say the, for these the light band this is the central axis so the crystals deviate 50 degree to the central axis and for this dark band this is the central axis so the crystals deviate 50 degree to this central axis so the crystals are present they are present in opposite direction in the bands and they also tilt 50 degree in the central axis in the band now why these bands are seen first we already know because of change in direction of enamel rods second reason has been given by some investigators because of changes in the calcification mineralization in these zones which appear as different areas so different calcifications coincide with the distribution of hunter sugar bands they differ in their calcification that can be the answer that is why they are seen then second reason that has been given with the help of careful decalcified sections and staining of enamel it has been observed further evidence is given that it is not just optical phenomena but actually there may be different zones altered 
alternate zones which have different composition they have different permeability and different content of organic material so that can be the second reason why they are seen but we know the most important reason that we discussed first and formally is that they are result of change in the direction of enamel rods so the most important and most widely accepted and largely prevalent reason answered for by which has also been supported by scanning electron microscopic studies where we see these rods where we can see some rods cut in the longitudinal and some cut in the transverse so the difference in orientation of groups of rods within these zones can be seen now we come to the summary of hunter shigar bands four questions what are these bands alternating light and dark bands light and dark bands then when are they seen they are seen when we take longitudinally cut ground sections under the oblique reflected light so where are they seen they are seen in inner two third of the enamel dark zones are known as dark zone light zones are known as para zones and why are they seen there are three reasons but the most important is change in the direction of enamel rods other can be variations in calcification and difference in organic component so let's check what have you learned hunter shigar bands are alternating dash and dash bands what other two terms hunter shigar bands are seen in what type of ground sections and under oblique dash light what kind of light hunter shigar bands are seen in inner dash of enamel which part of the enamel dark zones are called dash and light zones are called dash Hunter Shigar bands are seen because of change in dash of enamel rods. What is happening to enamel rods? What is happening to enamel rods that is leading to formation of Hunter Shigar bands? So that is all for this video. If you really enjoyed the video, do tap on the like button, share this video with your friends, keep watching, keep learning, and most importantly, keep smiling. And good luck for your exams. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye bye.